Eternal Father and our God who art in heaven, Lord, please help us to understand our commissions as Christian to the poor. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hello everyone and welcome back to Advent Cry. Today we are going to be looking at the Christian commission to the poor. What is it? What is the Christian commission to the poor? What is our duty as Christians to the poor? Being a Christian doesn't mean we go to church, we sit down and we listen to the nice service, and then we go back home and live our lives as anyone else. No, we are called to duty once we join the the rank of Christ. And as Christians, we have duty to fulfill even towards the poor. Now, what did God say to us about the poor and the needy? Let us turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 11. The Bible says, For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. Now, this is a command from the Lord, a direct command from the Lord, saying that the poor shall not cease to be out of the land. Therefore, we need to open wide our hand to our brother, to the poor, and to the needy that is always in the land. So it is not for us to pass them by. It is not for us to look at them and condemn them and not try to reach out and give something to them. When we do that, we are going directly against God's commands. Because he says that we ought to care for them. No. What is one of the reasons there will always be poor in the land? Would God just say such a thing lightly as that? No, it's not a light matter. God has reasons as to why he would say such a thing. And what is one of the reasons they will always be poor in the land? Let us turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 16. It says, He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. Now, this is a very important and serious Bible verse because clearly we are seeing that poor is linked with oppression. And riches. So one of the reasons persons become poor or remain poor is due to the fact that we have persons oppressing person to increase their riches. One of the reasons poor exist is because of oppression. Okay? We have for example, in countries where we see government increasing their pay to like $2 million per month, while other persons are not even getting 2% of any such increase. So, we see that there is unfairness whereby the gap is absolutely too wide and the cost of living is very high. 
So when a person makes a particular sum, by the time he or she reaches home, there is nothing remaining. There is nothing remaining for even saving. Now, what we see here happening is that these rich folks, they give to rich people instead of giving to the poor. They will have their luxurious parties that cost a whole lot of money to, to keep. And all of those money wasted could have been used to help out someone who is in need. But let us continue to what Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 31 says. It says, He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker. Now, as Christians, we are not to cause reproach on God by oppressing the poor. We are not to cause reproach upon our maker by oppressing the poor. Whenever we oppress the poor, we are reproaching Christ Jesus, who is our maker. No, just, just stop for a moment and ponder on what the scripture just says. When we oppress the poor, we are reproaching our maker. I think we need a definition for this word reproach right here because it's not just something to take lightly or just jump over because persons are doing this on a regular basis. They are even siding with things that are not fear that are causing more oppression and the poor no the definition for reproach means to criticize if you show let me get a better definition. Let, let me get a definition here from the Merriam-Webster. It means to express someone's disapproval or of disappointing in their actions. The expression of disapproval or disappointment. So therefore, Whenever you oppress the poor, God disapprove of you and he is disappointed in those of us who do such a thing. So it is not a good thing for anybody to do because we are reproaching our maker whenever such a thing is done. So as Christians, what are we called to do in regards to the poor? Proverbs chapter 14 and the verse same 31. It says, But he that honoreth him had mercy on the poor. Now, when we have mercy on the poor, it shows that we honor God. And whenever we honor God, we will have mercy on the poor. Now, it is also important for us to understand what it means to honor. So let us also define the word honor. The word honor means high respect, great esteem. Okay, so when we have respect, when we have respect for God, we will have mercy on the poor. When we esteem what God say, we will have mercy on the poor. And vice versa, when we don't have any respect for God, then we will not have any mercy and the poor. 
Let us continue to Psalms 41 verse 1. It says, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. So as Christians, we ought to show respect to God by having mercy on the poor. And in Psalms 41 verse 1, it says, Blessing is pronounced upon those of us who honor the poor or who consider the poor rather. So when we take the poor into consideration, where we say, boy, you know, you know, Mr. So-and-so is over there and he is a poor. So our Mrs. So-and-so is over there and she is a poor. Here, let us put together something and reach out to he or she as to aid in the helping of preventing hunger. It says what? The Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. Now, each and every one of us have our own, has our own time of trouble. There will come a point in our lives when we will have to face some difficulties that we wish we would have somebody to help us through. God said, when we help the poor, he will deliver us in the time of trouble. So, my brothers and my sisters, if you want to have deliverance, even in the time of trouble, then consider it the poor, because a blessing of deliverance is pronounced upon us when we do such a thing. Now, what happens to those who don't fulfill this command and those who follow this command? Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 21. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that had mercy on the poor, happy is he. So, the comparison and the contrast that we see here is that one is a sinner who continues to sin whenever he or she continues to oppress the poor. But the person who has mercy on the poor, he is a happy person. What is he? A happy person person. So if we want to be happy, we must also have mercy on the poor. And what does this tell us about those who are rich? They are unhappy. Here is the Bible giving us the details. We don't need to go and ask them if they're happy. They are unhappy. We know they are unhappy. They will, they will oppress the poor to try to increase in riches to buy everything as to cater to their needs as to give them enjoyment and pleasure but the bible says they are sinners they are not happy because they are oppressing the poor and they have no respect for god so those persons no they are not happy they are some most miserable set of individuals living on the face of the earth, believing that their wealth, their fame, and their money can bring them true happiness, but not so. That is false. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 19. Better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than divide the spoil with the proud. So it is better, right? To be of a humble spirit with the lowly. Better to gather with the lowly. Better to be seen among those who are lowly, the poor. Than to divide your spoil. Than to divide your good, your goods, your food kind with those who are proud in their hearts. With those who are high and lofty. Mm, they don't need it. They don't need it. So it would be better for you 
to go and be humbled in spirit with the lowly. You know, let us hear what verse 17 of Proverbs 19 has to say. It says, He that had pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. Oh, mercy. This is so beautiful. Can you imagine it? We are lending to the Lord when we have pity upon the poor. So when we give to the poor, who, who what did the Bible just say? When he that had pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. When, 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 when the bank lend you some money, what happens when you have to repay the bank? You have to repay with interest, don't it? And God is better than the bank. So when we lend to God, and God is going to repay us, watch what the next part of this verse said. And he that, and that, and that which he had given, will he pay him again? And that which he had given, will he pay again? So when we have pity upon the poor, when we give to the poor, when we open our hands to the poor that is in the land, we are lending to God. And what God says, he will pay back to us. My brothers and my sisters, you know what? Some of us, who are also not so rich but can afford things, the reason we are not being blessed more as well is because we love to hoard. We love to scrape and gather everything to ourselves. We think just like those rich oppressors. We want to be like them. And so we have little pity upon the poor little to no pity upon the poor we are not lending to god and therefore god is not repaying us and we are not getting any interest we are sinners that's what the bible says when we oppress the poor and when we don't have any pity on them we are sinners so my brothers and my sisters as Christians, we have a duty to fulfill. We ought to ensure that we care for the poor and the needy. And whenever we see persons of any ranks oppressing, of any rank oppressing the poor, we ought to stand up against it. We ought to show them that we are not pleased with it. Because God is not pleased with it. And we are not on the side of the devil. We are on the side of God. Those who took the side of those persons, they are on the side of the devil. They are not on God's side. The Bible clearly tells us, right? That they that oppress the poor reproach it his maker they have no respect for god god tells us why they will always be poor in the land and the reason is because of oppression because of oppression they will always be poor in the land and those who promulgate and support the oppression they are one of the cause why poor and poverty and needy will increase in the land. But the time will come when they will have to give an account to God for the stance that they have taken. My brothers and my sisters, I have come to the end of my presentation. I want it to be brief and short. Nonetheless, with much scripture as to back up what we are saying. So with that being said, let us close with a brother prayer. Father, word in heaven. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to lend to you by giving to the poor. 
because whenever we do such, you will pay us back and you will quadruple. Sometimes you will pay us, Lord, a hundredfold. Many of us don't see it. We want to be hoarders. We want to gather. We want to keep everything to ourselves. But the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. We receive more blessings when we give than when we receive. So, Father, help us to fulfill our commissions as Christians and not just to stand up and sit back while the oppression is going on in the land or try to take side and agree with the oppressive force because we know, Lord, that it is a force that is from beneath that is causing the oppression on your people. Be with us, Father, and let there be changes in our lives for the better and not for the worst. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for watching. I ask that you may please to like, share, subscribe for more important updates and videos like this one. God bless.